Well, howdy, folks. We're having a seance. No, I'm sorry. We're actually not doing that. We're going to make a pizza out of Jiffy pizza crust mix. And I've never used this product before. I've seen it, but I've never used it. And if you watch my previous video from a week or so back, you can notice that I did a uh, pizza using a dollar store pizza crust and it turned out really awesome. So let's see how it says to do the Jiffy crust. Okay, it says here, one package of Jiffy pizza crust mix, one half cup of warm water, assorted toppings, prepare and set aside. Preheat oven to 425. It says stir your pizza crust, mix and mix and warm water to a soft crust. Cover and let stand for five minutes in a warm place. Knead several times on a floured surface. Grease a 12 by or 14 inch pan. Grease fingers. The dough on the bottom of the sides of the pan, dough may be shaped into a 14 by 10 rectangle or a grease baking sheet. Pre-baked crust for two to three minutes before adding your favorite toppings, strained meat and other stuff from the crust, and then bake it for 18 to 20 minutes. I like the one I just took out of the package and put toppings on it and threw it in the oven better, but uh, we'll see how this turns out. Anyway, it's a way to make a fresh crust without having to, you know, portion out your flour, portion out your yeast, and all that good stuff. So, pretty simple. And I got some other recipes on the sides. You can do breadstick type things and whatever. So, let's get started. You've reached the insane shelf. I'm sorry, but I'm out to lunch. And can't take your call right now. Honestly, I've been out to lunch for probably 25 or 30 years now, so don't expect me back anytime soon. Leave a name and number. And if you ain't a bill collector, I might call you back. Have a good day. Hello, this is Chang, an American white cleaner. You left Chef Check It with me 18 months ago and never returned for Chef Check It. Would you please come pick up Chef Jacket? Call me. Now, now, today. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot. Join me. Ciao, y'all. All right, folks, we got uh, Ozarka water. I like to use nice spring water when I'm cooking. Got a half cup here. And we're going to heat this up a little bit in the microwave so it'll be warm to go into our dough mix. Pizza crust, whatever you want to call it. Pizza crust mix. All right, folks, we got our fork in here to mix this up with. We got our warm water. Go ahead and stir this up good. Remember, we're going to knead it. We're just trying to get it all mixed together. We're going to put this over in the windowsill for about five or ten minutes. Let the yeast kind of activate. And uh, then we'll go from there. So, I'm going to set this camera down so I can hold this bowl and get this all mixed up. Alright, there we go. There's a the dough, folks. I'm going to throw some plastic wrap over the top of this. And let it sit over here in this windowsill behind me. Alright, there we go, folks. Wrapped up. Let that set for five or ten minutes, and uh, we'll start kneading it. Okay, here in the window seal, so stay nice and warm. And uh, I'm even a ganiac at uh, cleaning up at the house here. Um, this Mr. Clean, Clean Freak's pretty good stuff. So I sanitize this, and then I, after that, washed it down with just plain water. And come back with a dry paper towel. We're going to do our uh, kneading right here on the surface. So make sure your surface is good and clean when you're kneading dough. You don't want like cat hair and shit in your pizza. And just like that, folks, welcome to Miami International. All right, folks, it's been about 10 minutes. Hard to see through that plastic, but I think we're about ready. It's uh, swollen up about twice the size of the original size, so I think we're just about ready to start kneading this dough. 
All right, folks, let's get into this here. See what we're looking like. First off, dust your hands a little bit in your powder here and your flour. That way, this dough don't stick to you. It's bad when you get it out of this bowl. I'll put a little bit on the bottom of this bowl to kind of help me ease it out of here. All I'm doing here is just taking this right out of the bowl here. I'll put just a little bit in there, like so, so it doesn't stick to my fingers too bad. Are we getting it out? Hey, it's Friday. We're just waiting to hear from Story 4. We were recently in NPR's Washington studio to hear more of the show. Stephen Skeet introduced the story of Miguel Encinias, a decorated fighter pilot who passed away in 2016 at the age of 92. He served as a U.S. military pilot in World War II. All right, so here's a dough. Rolled over, put some flour on this side. Let's start kneading it out here. You know, stuff you got stuck to your fingers. Put your right back in there. As he got older, he was diagnosed with dementia. There we go. Mr. Chef's watching TV behind me, so uh, I might hear that in the background. Those are actually uh, coming out real nice. just wanted to be up in that plane with every ounce of his being. Maybe he's listening to us somewhere out there. I hope so. Sometimes, this is so uh, easy to work. You can just pat it out with your hand. You don't need to toss it or roll with a rolling pin or anything. It's actually a pretty nice feeling dough. Where you just, it almost demands to be shared with a larger audience. In 2010, StoryCorps began to animate conversations. Like so. To be viewed by new audiences on You can take it up and toss it in the air if you want to, but uh, I don't have very big ceilings here. And his nine-year-old son, Aiden. What I can do if you want a little stiffer dough, you can just take it since we did that one time, put it back into a ball like so. Stiffen it up a little bit, make it a little more rigid. Put your flour back out. And try it one more time. You get a nice a little stiffen of dough here when you kind of work them. There we go. See that there? Get your ball. And get you a nice brown pizza here. And what you're doing is you're working them glutens in there to get it a little tighter strand so it doesn't fall apart on you. Not quite as flimsy. There you go. And when I'm doing this, I like to just kind of use a palm of my hand. And kind of spin it a little bit as you go. You can make it a nice round dough that way. It'll be uniform without a rolling pin or anything. Just kind of taking the palm of your hand there and kind of pressing against it a little bit outward each time as you go here. You can use both hands if you like, however you like. And it's stiffening up from as flimsy as it was the first go around. At this point, we're not quite as wide as we need to be, so you can actually take it. And I got the camera down here, but what I'm doing is I'm, I'm tossing it to stretch it out a little bit. Each time you toss it, you just pull it a little bit. Around the time of the 2016 presidential election, Dave Isay says he got the idea for a new kind of... Now we're getting a nice round dough here. ...united country becoming increasingly divided. He decided to call it One Small Step. What's the difference between regular story core and One Small Step? So every regular story core interview are people who know about each other. So I have a uh, pizza pan here, a pizza sheet. That's going to be just the right size for this here dough. And what I would normally do is put a little, uh, while I'm making a fresh pizza of dough, I'll put a little bit of cornmeal down to help it slide off there. I don't have any cornmeal right now, so what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of olive oil, put just a very thin amount of olive oil on this pan, Rub that around so it gives it a little bit of a barrier so it comes off that full paper. Let me get it done cooking. And I mean, just a little bit. Just enough to keep that friction from uh, sticking to the pan there. There we go. 
So there we go, folks. Nice pizza crust here. You can kind of push it to the edges if there's little places that are off a little bit, but this was pretty much circular, so not too, not too bad. So it did say to uh, par bake this a little bit before you add your toppings, and we're gonna poke a few holes in here. I got just like a little uh, oyster fork here, but poke a few holes that way it doesn't puff up on you as you're par baking it. Uh, it lets the air keeps the air from getting trapped in there, and actually lets it escape, so you don't have a big lump of shit when you're trying to top your pizza it's all puffed up in one area all right so you don't have to go super crazy but just enough to make sure your air holes are good all right folks we are took this out of the oven put it in there for about four minutes it's got a crust but it ain't cooked all the way just got that little bit of a crust so that the sauce doesn't go all the way through the dough. So, what I'm using here tonight is just some regular old tomato sauce. Open it up old school style with the oil can style opener. And we're just gonna pour a little bit on here. I don't like a ton of sauce myself, so you know you don't have to you know load it down. Just put enough to coat everything. Then I'm gonna take a rubber spatula here. Just kind of smooth it out all along to the edges here. If you need a little more, you can put a little more. If you don't like as much, don't put as much. Totally up to you. And one thing I like to do also when I'm putting the sauce on, I like to put just a little bit of olive oil down as well. Personal preference. Kind of riches up the tomato a little bit, so I put just a little bit of olive oil. I'll kind of smear that around as well. Ooh, there we go, there we go. Get that nice little sheen to it. Kind of riches up the tomato a little bit, so I like to do that. Okay, next thing. I'm going to put some granulated garlic or garlic powder on there. Sprinkle that all the way over. Next up, a little Italian seasoning. It's just your standard Italian seasoning blend. You can buy any grocery store. Okay. Looking and smelling good already. All right, we're gonna put some black pepper there. I always use fresh ground black pepper. I don't like the pre-ground stuff. Your fresh ground is so much more flavor. And we'll put a little bit of salt on this as well. I have some sea salt here on the ground and fresh ground as well. Now, now the tomato sauce and everything's got some flavor. What I like to do next on my pizzas, I like to put a base of grated Parmesan. right down all over the top of the sauce. And then I like to put the cheese, the actual cheese and mozzarella on top of everything so it melts down over. So that's the base I use for my pizza. It's my standard base. Now we'll throw down, uh, I got some olives here. I got some mushrooms, I got some pepperonis. So we're gonna put some olives down. You can use black olives, Kalamata olives, green olives, just whatever you like. I mean, you can top a pizza with just about anything you want. As long as the toppings aren't too wet. And don't use pineapple on your pizza, folks. That's just nasty. And Mrs. Chef loves pineapple on her pizza. So we usually gotta get a half and half kind of pizza if we're uh, eating pizza together. All right, we'll throw these mushrooms down. And you're just trying to, you know, equally uh, put toppings on so each piece will have a little bit of mushroom, a little bit of olives. No real rhyme or reason, just as long as all your pieces have a little bit of all the toppings. That's all that really matters. There we go. 
I'm gonna throw some pepperonis on there. And I like to put the, the other cheese, the mozzarella, right up on top because I like to get the browning kind of, uh, like the cheese to get that little bit of brownness to it as it cooks. And I remember I always leave some space in between your toppings. That way your pizza gets a chance to breathe. If you cover it up, you'll be kind of doughy in the middle if you don't leave it uh, breathe. So. Good one on your apartment. Great kitchen. One right here. Okay, there we go. All right, folks. We're going to pop that in the oven for 18 minutes. We'll see how it looks after that. I guess I need to go ahead and uh, add the cheese there. I kind of forgot about that part. Ooh, there we go, folks. That's looking more like a pizza now with all that cheese on there. Now we'll throw that in the oven. See what that looks like. All right, folks. Pizza is ready. And the back of my oven gets a lot hotter, so this side's a little more done, which I like it like that anyway. But, uh, probably should have just rotated it once, like something like that. Make it even, but uh, hey, whatever, you know. Pizza's pizza, and that looks great. Dough still feels uh, crispy, but That's still so nice. soft, so I think it's held up real nice. All right, let's cut into it and see what we got here. All right, folks, I like the little crispier part myself, so mm, that looks good. And the front of the oven kind of cooks it a little bit softer, so it actually works out good if somebody likes theirs a little crispy like I do, or somebody likes theirs a little more soft. Worked out perfect. I'm gonna let this cool down for a minute because uh, it looks nuclear hot. But yeah, this has to be a pretty decent crust. I like it. All right, folks. I think we needed to put a little bit of uh, hot sauce in here. I got this uh, bouillard here. I like a little hot sauce on my pizza sometimes. Mmm. All right, folks, let's see what we got here. It's pretty good, Mrs. Chef. I think you're going to like it. I like mine a little crispy like that, and it's pretty crispy, so... Uh, no, just the one side that was in the back of the oven, so I grabbed a piece from that side. I got grabbed a piece from the front side, but it's uh, pretty damn tasty. Pretty decent crust. But really hot, so be careful. I'll just burn my tongue off. So it actually has a pretty decent crunch to it. That's a pretty good pizza crust for being like a dollar. So yeah, not bad at all. At all. I think uh, if I bought this one again, I'd probably add just a little pinch of sugar in there and a little pinch of salt. Make it more authentic like my homemade version is. But uh, for store-bought, pre-made uh, mix, not too bad at all. 